welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. So today is my long awaited makes video for you all. I haven't done one of these videos in such a long time so I'm really really sorry that I haven't brought one to you. The last time I did one was actually in the summer last year so it has been such a long time and it's just been one of those years as we all know so I just haven't had a chance to upload a makes vlog, just haven't felt like doing it and just other things have been ongoing in my life really. Um, but I've got quite a lot to show you today so I don't know how long this video is going to be so I hope you do stick through with me till the end but you know just skip along as you see fit basically or stop and start it you know and um, so I've got quite a number of items to show you and the way I'm going to do it today is that I'm not going to try absolutely everything on that I've made purely because a few things that I am including in this video I have done separate videos for in the past so I thought I'd just include them anyway as a collective um, but because I've tried them on in the past in a previous video all I'll do for those garments is link a card up above so you can go back and look at that video if you are interested in that particular item. So we'll start with what I am wearing then and today I am wearing the Wilder blouse. So this is the pattern here, it's by the Friday Pattern Company and it's a lovely dress, it's very free flowing so it's your buffet dress as they call it. Um, so you have on the back here, a blouse version, a shorter dress version, and then the full dress version, which comes down to sort of mid calf, and there's two tiers on that. I've just made the blouse version, and the fabric that I've used for this is a cotton lawn from Felicity Fabrics. Really, really like this fabric, but I don't actually think it's suitable for this style of garment because I think it does me need a little bit more drape. This is quite a structured fabric so it holds the, the shape well of the raglan sleeves but I just it doesn't have very much drape. So I just think in the, my next one that I will make I will do it in a viscose for sure. Um, so I'll just show you the detail of the garment then. So it's got a lovely ruffled neckline which you pull in with this bow here and I really like that detail and there's like a keyhole opening just here. And it's got raglan sleeves, which you won't be able to see because of this busy print, but it is a really nice design and it just makes this a really easy garment to sew. If I pan you down, you can see that it, it does come up quite short and it's a lot shorter than I am happy with. Next time I will lengthen by a good three inches, I think, just to bring it down to sort of more this level because that's my preference. It's right on my curvy area um, that I don't like showing off. Um, and I would A-line it slightly as well because I made the size, I think it was the size small, and it's just a little bit tight around my hip area. It's absolutely fine everywhere else. I've got loads of room in the sleeves and in the bodice itself. It's just literally around this um, hip area. And I actually did cut some bias binding out of this fabric to try and keep the length as much as possible. So yeah, it's just sitting right where I'm emphasising the curves of my body, which I just prefer to have things sitting a little lower on me. Um, and I'm gonna be completely honest, I've had three children, two obviously pregnancies, because I've had twins, and I've had C-sections with both, and I do have a little pooch area around, sort of underneath my stomach, um, which was never there before, and it's I think it's scar tissue. And I just find that this sits just above it, so you can see that little ridge that I've got there, and it doesn't just makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. So that's why I like to wear some of my garments a little bit longer as well. Um, I really do like the style of this garment. I will make it again for sure, and I do have the Guthrie and Garney uh, Sewing Society sort of kit to make the dress version and that is in a beautiful viscose. So this was kind of like my practice version, I suppose, to see how the fit was. And I cut straight into my pattern um, in a size small. And at first I thought, oh no, this is perhaps turned out a little bit too small, but in actual fact, like, it's fine around the top. It's literally just this bottom section on the blouse version that I will A-line out slightly next time, which is a really alt easy alteration to make. Um, so the size, is that this comes in is from an extra small through to a 4x um, so there is quite a range of sizes for this pattern and because it is quite generous you know you probably would want to size down I would say but I would definitely say go for a floatier fabric than the one I've used but um, you know I will wear this I'll just wear it with high-waisted skirts and perhaps tuck it in or even just to fold it under to give the effect of it being tucked in so that's this one I shall get changed into my next make 
Okay, so my next make is New Look K6434, and this is the pattern here. I have made this version with the fluted sleeves. I have made this in the past, and I really, really like this garment. It's just a really nice sort of simple top um, you can wear it with a number of different bottoms. And I made it in a size 12, which is a bust 34, which is what I am. And it's for a waist of 26 um, and a half and a hip of 36. Now my waist and hips are a lot bigger, so I did make a slight A-line alteration to this just so it skimmed over my hips a lot better. And I did that on my previous version as well. I'll link up a card just in case you want to watch the video of my previous version because it is in a slightly different fabric. So for this version, I have it in a lovely double gauze fabric with these lovely sort of foiled leaves on it in a gold colour. And this is the coral um, colourway of this fabric. Felicity Fabrics have it in seven colourways and it is available on their website right now. And what they did was actually set all of the Felicity Fabrics bloggers a one metre challenge. So we chose our top three colours that we liked and then they sent us out one metre of one of those colours so we didn't actually know which colour way we were going to get and then we all made a, a, a garment or something um, to show what we'd made out of one metre and we didn't know what each of us was going to make either so it was really really nice and we do like to chat on our Felicity Fabrics WhatsApp group um, so it was really hard to keep it all a secret. Um, the blog is now live on the Felicity Fabrics website if you did want to have a look at all the other um, creations that have been made and there are some really really beautiful garments on there and it was just amazing that we didn't actually duplicate what we've made so that was amazing and um, so yes like I say I've made this pattern out of my fabric and I just managed to squeeze it out of one meter and um, so I have made the version with the fluted sleeves as you can see here and with this fabric I have found that it because it grows slightly and um, it's brought the sleeves a bit longer than my previous version and the sort of fluted section is a lot more um, drapey and it just seems like it's bigger so it's more of a bell I suppose but I really really like how this turned out so I will pan you down so you can see so it just comes down to sort of mid hip and I prefer this length of top on me I just I just think it's just a little bit more flattering it's not too high and um, it just covers that little pooch area that I've got and yeah I've just a-lined it very slightly just to skim over my hip area just here and I have actually added some bias binding and I used some lovely cream satis bias binding that I bought from Dunelm and that was just to give it a little bit more of a luxury feel to go with this foiled leaf design that is on the fabric and I've done that on the bottom of the hem as well as you can see here and that was to keep as much length as possible. Really really like this, it's lovely to wear, it's really really soft um, and just very comfortable because double gauze, although it doesn't have stretch as such, it kind of grows and moves and moulds with your body. So I really, really do like this top um, and it will get lots of wear. I actually have been wearing it quite a lot and I'm so, so pleased when this colourway turned up. It's looking a little bit more washed out on screen but it's a beautiful coral colour um, and I will link the blog down below if you would like to go and check out it in more detail and all the other uh, bloggers, what they have actually made as well. So I should go and get changed into my next make. Okay, next up is the Tilly and the Buttons Cocoa Top. So you won't be surprised perhaps to see one of these in my video as I do make so many. Um, so this is the pattern here, just in case you're not familiar with it, and I have just made the plain round neck version um, with long sleeves this time, so no pockets or anything on it at all. And I've made it out of this um, stripy navy and white Pontaroma fabric that I got from Sony Sunshine quite a while ago. Um, I have actually made this, I think it was last year, so it's been a while um, since I made this and I have worn it a lot and it has started to bubble quite a bit on sort of the inside of the arms and just anywhere where it rubs against basically. I do find that with Pontaroma, it does bubble, qu bubble quite a bit. Um, so I made the straight size three with this without any changes whatsoever and I just find that that fits me really, really well. So I'll just pan you down so you can see it in a bit more detail. So it's got a lovely A-line shape, again just sort of sits where I want it to. It's got these lovely split sides here um, and I've done the long sleeves this time. This is the first time that I've done the long sleeves and I haven't added any length to those and they're just the right length for me. I'm five foot five for your reference so this is where it comes to on me. And for the neckline you literally just fold it over and then top stitch it down and I, I think I've used 
a twin needle for that. Um, let me just check. Yeah, I've used a twin needle around the hem of the bottom and at the bottom of the sleeves as well. So it's a really quick, simple make, perfect for beginners if you've never used um, jersey fabrics before. It's just such a simple make, probably the easiest jersey top I would say that you could ever make. So it's definitely a good starting point if you are a beginner for um, using jersey. So yes, it's just one that I wear quite regularly with jeans or under pinafore dresses. It's very versatile top. So I'll be back in a moment with my next mate. Okay, so next up is the Tilling the Buttons Agnes top. And this is one of my favorite jersey tops. This is the pattern here. Uh, and there are three variations that you can do, which I'll turn around to show you the line drawings. There's one with a ruched neckline, ruched sleeves, and then a plain neckline. And you can have plain sleeves and that comes in sort of shorter length sleeves and long sleeves. So I have made mine out of a lovely cotton jersey that I got from Andrea Beyond the Pink Door and it's a glitter dot jersey. So these gold sort of bits here have um, glitter in them so they do sparkle um, and it's got pinks, whites and blue splodges over it as well. And I really, really like this fabric. It would be great for going underneath my um, pinafore dresses and that kind of thing, but I do like just wearing it on its own as well. Um, so for this, I made the size four, uh, which is a UK size 12. Um, I usually make a size three in this pattern, but with cotton jersey, I do find that it has a closer fit. So I just prefer the size four fit on me. If I use um, a jersey that's a little bit more drapey or has a lot more stretch than a cotton jersey, then I usually do a size three. So for this one, it's a size four. So I'll stand back so you can see it in fuller detail. So I've done three quarter length sleeves for mine, as that's where I prefer my sleeves. And I just lengthened the um, shorter sleeve just to get it to where I want it to be. Um, again, I haven't changed the length on this. This is where it comes as standard, and I'm really happy with that length on me. It just comes to where I want it to. So you can see that it is very fitted, um, and this is the size four, so it is quite a close fitting garment. Um, I have twin needled around the neckline and again on the bottom of the sleeves and the bottom of the hem. And for my neckline, as you can see, I do get manage to get it quite flat, which I'm really, really pleased and with. And for that, I actually do a calculation um, to get the measurement right. So I measure the um, circumference of the neckline in centimetres and then I take that measurement and times it by 70% and then add on another 10 a sort of centimetres onto that figure to cut my neckband piece and I just use the pattern piece that comes in the tilling the buttons pattern um, but I just then alter the length of it to suit that calculation and then I just find that it goes in perfectly and it's very very flat I also sew the neckband in on my sewing machine. I don't just go straight onto my overlocker with it just because I find that um, I might cut off too much and I have done that in the past. So yeah, this is how I do it. I just sew it on my sewing machine and then I overlock the seam allowance and then top stitch with a twin needle the seam allowance down so it sits nice and flat. So on the inside, if I can show you, that has been overlocked and it has been top stitched down with the with the twin needle. You probably won't be able to see it all that well because it's a dark fabric, um, but yeah, that's how I do it. So if you struggle with the neckband, that is the calculation that I always use. And I will put that in the description box below just in case you forget it. Okay, so I shall go and get changed into my next mate. Okay, so next up is another Tilly in the Buttons pattern and it is the Nora sweater. So this is the pattern here. And there are quite a number of variations that you can make with this. So here are the line drawings on the back. There are three variations here. So you've got one with extra long sleeves, a stepped hem and a funnel collar. And then here you've got the stepped hem with shorter sleeves and then the short sleeve version again with a long sort of body. So that actually has shorter sleeves than this one. It's a really, really oversized sweater. So if you are going to make this, do bear that in mind. You might want to size down. Um, so I actually made the shorter sort of length version with, I was going to go with the funnel neck, but it didn't work out in the end. So I just went with the round neck and I have changed it slightly. So the, the shorter version hasn't got the stepped hem. I just literally have cut it the same length all the way around to match the front. So I don't have the longer bit at the back. So I'll step back in a moment so you can see it in more detail. 
Now, I made mine in a lovely French terry fabric that I got from Crafty So and So, and they kindly gifted me this fabric in return for a blog post, which was actually sort of back end of last year. And I have done a separate blog all about this, so I will link a card up above in case you want to check that out. And I will link the blog itself in the details below. So I really do like this sweater. I don't wear it very often, just because it is quite oversized, so it's not sort of something that I usually go for. I'll pan you down so you can actually see where the length comes down on me. So I've got it on with another top underneath because it is really, really short. So this is the um, length that it would be at the front for the step hem, and then I've just kept the length all the way around the back exactly the same as the front. The sleeves are really, really long. As you can see, they, they do come down to sort of near enough my knuckle area. And sometimes I do just turn the sleeves back like that just so um, I have a little bit of contrast and um, then I'm not dipping it in sort of the washing up as much. But I, I do really quite like the long sleeves. It's nice to pull them down over your hands if you're a bit cold. Um, and I actually folded those sleeves back twice um, for the hem on there. So they were really, really long. And then I've just used my twin needle um, in two different colors just to sort of match the colors that are in this fabric, which I think is a really pretty design. It is very, very busy. Um, so it only goes with sort of plain bottoms really. Um, and then I have twin needled, I think around the neckline as well. Now you will see that my um, ribbon fabric that I've used is very, very thin. <laughs> and that was actually an accident. Um, I went straight in <laughs> for this on my overlocker and I cut off too much. So there was my lesson learned. I always now sew my neckbands in on my sewing machine because that should have been sitting much higher, but I just didn't want to try and unpick it for one because it just would have ruined the sweater. And I don't actually mind how it looks. I think it is quite a high neckline anyway. So it's fine, you know, I'll just go with it. So I've called it a happy accident. I really do like this fabric and I do like the sweater when, you know, to wear it when it's a little bit cooler. It's just the length that I'm not too sure of and also the width actually of the sweater itself, you know, it is quite wide. And I know that, um, I think it's Lucy from Sew Essential, she actually took a section out of each side here um, on the pattern to make it narrower. And that was quite a good way of doing that. So because this is really, really oversized, I made the size two which doesn't correspond with my body measurements at all. Um, so I really did size down two sizes, basically. I, my body measurements correspond to a size four, um, but for stretch garments and oversized garments of Tillis patterns, I usually do a size three, but this is a size two. And I still think I could have gone down to a size one if I wanted a closer fit again. Uh, but I, I'm quite happy with this uh, fit as it is. So yes, this is the Tilly and the Buttons Nora um, sweater, and it's really nice and warm and snuggly to wear, so I'm, I'm really quite happy with so it. So I'll get changed into my next make. Okay, so next up is the Sew Over It Sylvia robe. I have made this in the past. It's a really, really nice pattern, really nice design, very simple to sew. There are two length options with this pattern. So there's a shorter one, which comes sort of high hip, and then a lower one, which comes below sort of your bum area. Um, I have actually made mine in between the two lengths. So I just drew a line on my pattern in between, um, and that has worked out perfectly for me. And I really like that length. Um, this comes in sizes extra small through to extra large, which is a UK eight to 10, up to a 16 to 18 but it is quite an oversized pattern, so I think you would be fine to size down if necessary. I have made the extra small for my version, which doesn't fall into my body measurements. Um, I am actually falling into a size small, but I really like the, the fit of the extra small on me because it is quite generous in its size. So I've made it in this lovely um, crepe fabric, which is very lightweight. So when it turned up, it was actually a lot more sheer than I thought it was going to be. I did actually have another pattern in mind to make with this fabric, but when it turned up and I saw how sheer it was, that went out of the window. So this pattern was just perfect for it as I have made this pattern in the past and have made it in a chiffon fabric as well, which is very similar to a chiffon fabric. Um, so it's got lovely sort of drapey sleeves, which are, I'd say, three quarter length. And then it's got a lovely neckband that goes all the way around and you just sew that on separately at the end. Uh, I'll just pan you down so you can see the length that I've cut it to. 
So it comes to sort of mid hip area, I would say, and just sort of in the middle of my bum area. And I really do like that length. I just prefer it. I didn't want it too long and I didn't want it sort of the short length. Um, and I've got it on just with a ready to wear uh, sort of vest top. And that is quite a long one. So you can see that that sits low sort of hip on me. So that's the um, sort of fit on me in the extra small. So I just really like that. It's not too oversized. It's just sort of the right fit, I'd say. It is a really lovely sew. It's very straightforward, but because this fabric was very sheer, I decided to French seam all of my seams, so even the armholes. Um, so it did take me a little bit longer than what it usually would to make this garment up. Um, and in the past, I have actually hand sewn the neckband piece on, but for this time round, just for, I needed to get this done, I actually top stitched it on using my sewing machine. And it doesn't give as obviously as nice a finish um, but because this print is quite busy you can't even tell so I'm quite happy with how the finish is on this um, pattern for me so yeah I'm really going to look forward to wearing this when our summer eventually arrives um, as it's really quite nice to wear sort of on the beach or you know just everyday wear just to have a little bit of a cover-up you know especially if your skin is quite sensitive to the sun not that mine is because I do like to get a tan but yeah so really nice make um, and I will be uploading the blog in more detail on my Minerva profile page very soon. So I shall go and get changed into my next make. Right, so next up is the Poppy Pinafore by Loopy Mabel's Closet. And I absolutely love this dress. Um, if you know Jane, she has her own YouTube channel, which I'll link below. She has been designing her own patterns. And this is her first release, which I was so excited for her. And I was just really, really happy to be one of the testers for this pattern. And I just knew I would love this dress as it's a pinafore, which is just, you know, one of the dresses that I really like to wear. I just find that they really suit me and they are just so versatile. So here is the pattern. This was the one that I used as the pattern test. So I think it has a different front cover now, but you can see that Jane is modeling on the front and it is so versatile because she's got it on here with the pussy bow blouse and then some other style tops. And I have been wearing it with my cocoa tops and also my Agnes tops. And it just, yeah, it's a really nice um, pattern. It's a really nice dress to wear. So for this version, this was my test version, and I used this lovely wine sort of, it's in between a corduroy and a needle cord, actually. It's quite soft, but it's not as fine as needle cord, and it's not as thick as corduroy, if that makes sense. And I actually got this from Tamlin at Sewn on the Time. She has got a D-Stash account on Instagram, and she was getting rid of some fabric, and I got this from her. So it was really nice to incorporate this into my make. Um, and I'm really, really happy with it. It is a very oversized pattern. So the sizes it comes in is from extra small through to 2XL. And it is very, very generous. Um, it is designed to be a loose fitting garment. So if you want a closer fit, you just need to size down basically. Um, also the way does Jane has designed it is that it sort of comes as a tunic style length, I would say, so she's got it on with jeans. So if you want it more of a dress sort of length, you will need to lengthen the skirt just by adding length onto the bottom of the skirt, which is really, really easy to do. It's a really nice, quick and easy sew as well. And Jane has actually got a full sort of sew along on her YouTube channel. So if you do buy this pattern and you need your hand holding a little bit more, then you can just follow along with her sew along. So I really do like this. This one is the size small. So it is a little bit more oversized than I'd like, but I, I didn't want to go too small just in case it wasn't the right fit for me. And I have lengthened this into a dress. So I'll pan you down and then stand back so you can see. So the waistline is here, so it is a little bit higher than my natural waistline, so I would call that an empire line waistline. Um, and as you can see, it is really, really roomy, and it does have pockets as well, which is a great addition to this dress, and they are really, really deep. As you can see, my hands go all the way in, it's really nice. I'll move back a little bit more so you can see that it comes to my knees. Now, I would usually be wearing this with black tights on, um, as <laughs> my legs are really, really white at the minute, need some tan on them. Um, but yeah, so you can see that it is really generous in its size, um, really roomy, but it's really very comfortable to wear. I have bias bound my hem with some spotty bias binding, um, just again, to keep as much length as possible that I've added. 
and then on the back it has a button placket and I just added some wooden buttons that I bought, I think I got them on Amazon and they say handmade with love on them. Now because this is very, very roomy, I have actually just sewn those buttons straight on so I didn't actually do buttonholes in the end, I cheated. So I could just put this dress straight on over my head without obviously opening any closures or anything like that. Um, and it's just, yeah, really nice to be able to wear this um, during this transitional season from spring into summer and it's just really really comfortable to wear and just yeah really nice dress so this was a little bit more oversized than I'd like so I did go ahead and make a second version which I'll put on next so you can see the difference in the fit as I have sized down for that it does have a bias bound neckline and again I've used some spotty bias binding that I already had and on the armholes as well and I really do like using bias binding. I do quite find it quite nice to use. So like I said, it's got um, pockets in it. So I'll show you that I've got these beautiful sort of Aztec design pockets in mine, which were sent to me by my Swap Share Sew partner um, back end of last year when we did that challenge, which Jane actually hosted alongside Rosie from Rosie Sews Modern Vintage. And part of the challenge was to incorporate, I think it was pockets into your make. Um, so your partner sent you the pockets already cut out using Jane's template. So she actually has got a template on her website if you wanted just a, a pocket template. And that is exactly the same as the Poppy Pinafore pocket template. Um, yes, yeah, so they're really nice size. And I think she said that she, she measures down about eight centimetres from the waistline to put them in the right place. So um, yeah, it was nice to add those into this make as well. Right, so I'll get changed into the second version that I made and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here is my poppy pinafore in the extra small and I'm so much happier with the fit on this one. Now I've made this out of a cotton PK fabric which I got from Felicity Fabrics. It was in their remnant section so I don't think they have it available anymore um, but it was just so lovely to work with. It holds the structure of the dress really, really nicely as it does have body. Um, and this fabric does actually have a um, sort of waffle design on it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that but it's got a texture to this fabric and it's really, really nice and it sewed absolutely beautifully. So it's still got the bias bound neckline and I've used a pink contrast bias binding which I got from Laura at the Specky Seamstress and this one says made to measure on it and again for the armholes as well. Uh, so I'm showing you this worn just without a top underneath so you can see that it is very versatile. You can wear it as a summer dress and the armholes aren't too low. So the waistline on this is a lot better for me. It's not as big, but it still has a lot of room in there. So it's very, very comfortable and cool to wear in the warmer sort of months. Um, again, the deep pockets I've got in there, and this time I just use a nice back quarter that I had in this floral fabric. So I'll pan you down so you can see the length. So I think I added about four inches onto the length to get it to knee length and I really, really am happy with that and I've just added the bias binding to the hem again as well there. So I just really like that finish on my dresses. Really, really comfortable. As you can see, it's not as roomy as the other one on me and I, I just prefer that fit on my silhouette much better. At the back, it has got the button closure again and this time I have... Um, done functional buttonholes and buttons and I got these gorgeous buttons from the Swagman's Daughter and they are a vintage sort of collector and you can get all sorts of different vintage buttons on there. They've got so many and they're really good prices as well and she delivered really fast so um, yeah I was really pleased to get those and I really like sort of the, the turquoise colour against this cornflower blue in the fabric. I think it just looks really nice. Um, so to get this on and off, I can still get it on over my head, no problem, and I just undo the top button to enable me to get it on a little bit easier, so uh, yeah, I just do that up as soon as I put it on, which is absolutely fine, so really, really love this version, and it will get a lot of wear during the summer, and I wear it with um, my denim jacket, and I also have a scarf that um, contrasts quite well with this, which is like a very light blue kind of colour. Um, yeah, so that's with this one. I shall get changed into my next make. Okay, so next up is the Friday Pattern Company Lucida dress. And this is a really, really nice pattern to sew. This is the front cover here. As you can see, this lady is wearing this lovely red version. And um, it's just a really, really nice design and really flattering, especially if you are a pear shape like me, as it's got a lovely A-line shaped skirt. This dress comes in sizes extra small through to extra, extra large. 
and I made the size medium, which does correspond with my body measurements. Um, although I do think that I could size down to a small if I wanted to, um, as it does feel quite roomy, but it's nice to have something that isn't too fitted, I think, in a dress. It has a lovely A-line skirt, so it does skim over your hips, and then it has this lovely ruched detail here on the bust area, which is really very flattering, and you can pull those ties so you can kind of cinch in as much as you want, have as much cleavage on show or not, you know, whatever your preference is, basically. So I've made mine out of this gorgeous um, navy velour fabric, which is coming across quite royal on screen, but obviously I think that's because of the glare of the window, um, but it is a lovely navy colour, and it's just so, so lovely. I've done it so the nap is going down, so when you sort of stroke down, it's really soft. It has this lovely neckline, um, so it's got these ties here which ruch in around the bust area and I think that's really flattering, especially if you have a fuller bust, I think it is a really nice sort of design. Now I'm a, a C cup in normal bras, um, so I don't have a large chest but I do have an ample bust I suppose. Um, yeah and it just sits really really nicely across there. and. Then the sleeves are just little cap sleeves here, so really quite short. So you could lengthen those if you're you know, not keen on having your arms on display. Um, and then I'll pan you down a bit more so you can see the skirt. So the waistline is here, and then the skirt um, is this lovely A-line shape. Now I have added four inches to the length of this to get it to sit at knee length, as that's where I like my skirts to sit. Um, because this um, pattern, just come up really, really short. And if you have a look at the hashtag for the Lucida dress on um, Instagram, you will see how short it actually does come up on some people. Um, and the front and back skirt pieces are exactly the same. So you just cut two on the fold, really, really straightforward. Um, and it's just a really, really nice sew. So I've made a slight change to the dress. Obviously I've added that four inches of extra length onto the skirt, which I'll show you the pattern piece in a moment, as you can see where I've done that. Um, but now the front bodice actually is lined, and I just used a black sort of viscose jersey to line mine. Um, so that was quite fiddly to work with. So I just, um, what I did was I basted it in and then sewed it together as one piece. And so that made it a lot easier rather than having the sort of lining fabric flapping around as I was trying to sew it. Um, and, but it just sits really nicely. Now the back bodice actually isn't lined and you just sew that um, and just fold over the neckline basically at the back. Now when I did that, I didn't like how it looked. And then um, I also found that I had quite a lot of excess fabric at the back of my neck. So if I turn around, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I've actually added just a couple of darts just here onto the back, um, just to bring it, it the neck in a little bit. And I also, in the end, um, lined the back bodice as well. So to do that, I just cut out another back bodice piece out of the lining fabric, and then I just sewed it um, around the neckline and then flipped it inside and then treated it again as one piece so I basted it down the sides and across the bottom um, so that is just it's just a neater finish and it just means as well that the the neck around here where it joins at the seam line on your shoulder it just sits a lot flatter and you don't have any pesky um, seam allowances sticking out there which I found that I did have on the original bodice that I'd made up um, yeah, and adding those darts, I just sort of self-drafted those onto my, so they might not even be in the right place, but you know, it's worked so it sits flat against my neck, which I'm really pleased with. When I first made up the bodice where it was a little bit too big at the back, and I didn't like where I'd done the fold over neckline where I'd finished it, I did watch somebody else's video and they had trouble with um, the back sitting quite sort of prominently away from their neckline and they also put darts in as well so that's where I got the idea from to put the darts in and that has just worked fine but I think I could actually just alter the pattern to take it in and make the neckline at the back a little bit smaller for in the future if I didn't want any um, darts in there but I really really love how this dress has turned out it's really a very pretty dress and I think you could make it in you know a cotton jersey and just have it as a day dress whereas I feel that because this is in a velour fabric it is quite an evening style dress I wouldn't necessarily wear this out in the day and um, you know I do wear a lot of my sort of flamboyant me maids on the school run but this one I wouldn't really do that I think it's more of an evening wear dress um, and it's just absolutely beautiful so I'll grab the pattern piece for the um, skirt so you can see where I've added the length. So here is my pattern piece. So again, you can see that it is just 
um, put on the fold. So you cut two of those for the front and the back. And then the where I've added the length is literally at the shortened length and lines. So there's my four inches that I've added there um, onto it. So I cut it and then sort of just joined up the side there to marry it up so it was equal. And that just was the right amount of length to add for me. Like I say, I'm five foot five. Um, and that just comes down to my knee now as well. So I, I don't think that I'm particularly tall. I'd say five foot five is quite average, um, sort of in the middle, I suppose. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, it is a very, very short dress. Now, you can't see that from the picture on the front of the pattern because she sat down. So initially, when I cut out this fabric um, in the shortest, shorter version of the skirt. And when I sort of pinned it onto the bottom of the bodice, I thought, no, there's just no way I'm going to be wearing that because if I bend over, you'll be seeing everything. So to finish the hems, I just um, twin needled and I've twin needled around the, the bottom of it as well. And that looks absolutely fine. I just used an AB thread so you couldn't, you know, you can't see the stitching. It's really, really lovely dress to wear. It's so comfortable. So it'd be perfect for going on a night out, especially if you're going to be having something to eat. Right, so um, the fabric then, I actually was gifted this from Minerva. I had quite a lot of outstanding projects last year um, from Minerva because I just sort of, they just backed up as we were in lockdown. I just didn't have a chance to sew them all up. So I do need to write a blog and upload photos of this make, so I will be doing that um, very shortly. So I've got two to do. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get that up. But yeah, I really do like this dress. So. I'm actually going to be making another one in a cotton jersey just to have as a day dress so I'm looking forward to making that so that will be in my next makes video. Right so I'll go and get my next make. So my next make which I have actually done a separate video for this so I'm going to link a card up above um, so you can check that out if you'd like but it's the Sew Over It Marguerite dress. Now it's in this lovely white kind of cotton dobby fabric which I was gifted from um, Felicity Fabrics in return for a blog post so there is a blog all about this dress on their website and I'll link that down below for you and um, so I'm not going to get changed into this one because I've done a complete separate video for it so if you're interested in this dress please do check that video out um, it is a really lovely dress but it is a very very fiddly sew especially the armholes. Um, if I bring it closer, you'll see it's got this kind of um, folded over section and the way you sew those on um, is quite backward. It's, it's really quite strange. I mean, if you follow the instructions and you have fabric that you can tell the front and the back, you know, the, the reverse and the front of the fabric, you can tell them apart, then you'll have no problem whatsoever. But the cotton dobby, it was quite hard to sort of realised which was the front and which was the back as you were sewing it up. This is glaring quite a lot because of the window, which is why I'm not putting it on as well. Um, now this fabric, because it is a white fabric, it was, it did show your underwear through it. So in the end, I lined it with um, just actually an old curtain lining and that has worked really well. I've done that throughout the skirt as well. Um, so in actual fact, it has given this dress more of an ivory um, sort of colourway to it which you can't tell on screen because of the glare of the window but um, yeah it, it is very sort of ivory coloured now. It's really nice to wear in the summer especially if you have a tan and um, it does make me look quite pale at the moment um, but it's really nice if I sort of pair it up with a denim jacket or sort of a leather style biker jacket which I have done in my video where I show it. Um, it's got a centre invisible zip down the back now, usually this pattern has a um, eyelet opening here, and I just took that out completely because I wanted the zip to go all the way at the back, and I ended up taking quite a lot of this section here in because it was really, really big, um, and it just kind of stuck out, and I've added a hook and eye on there because I didn't put the, um, the zip in very well. Um, but yes, I really do like this dress. It's not one that I wear regularly, I would say, um, because of the colour choice. So I am considering dyeing this a different colour, um, just so I will wear it more often. I was thinking maybe a dusky pink or something. Um, I just thought that this colourway would go with my skin tone quite well, but it, it does in the summer when I've got a tan, but for the rest of the year, it really doesn't. So I was thinking of, yeah, dyeing it. So I'm not really sure how that will work out, but it is something that I'm considering doing. Um, yeah, just because it's a shame to have it sat there in the wardrobe, especially as it took me quite a while to make it. Um, now the size, I believe, I think I made a size 12 for this or a size 10, I can't actually remember. What I'll do is I'll pop it across the bottom of the screen 
um, and I didn't make any alterations to the fit apart from the back where I took the zip in quite a lot because I got rid of that eyelet opening and I had heard that it does did give quite a lot of it, sort of excess fabric at the back so that is what I've done and um, brought that in quite significantly but yeah it's a beautiful dress you've got these gathering section here into the waistband and also at the top of the skirt and that is on the back as well just here and here either side of the zip um, and again here at the end of the bodice yeah it's really quite nice so I think in the right type of fabric this is a really stunning dress um, I just wish that I'd have done it in a different colour um, so yeah I'm going to consider dyeing that so yeah let me know what you think um, have you ever dyed a garment before how have you got on have you used one that goes in the wash in the washing machine or have you just done it in the sink you know so I'm a, I'm a little bit scared about dyeing it but I think I, I just need to do something so it gets more wear um, you know but yeah it is a really nice pattern I don't know whether I'll repeat it because it was quite a fiddle to make um, and it's not my favourite sort of style of dress um, yeah, so I don't know whether I'll repeat it, but it is a very nice pattern. Right, so next up is the Bobbins and Buttons Emily Dungaree dress. And I absolutely love this pattern. I've made it twice now, and I actually pattern tested for Julia, uh, I think it was beginning of last year. Um, yeah, I think it was, and uh, it was a really nice one to sew. It's very, very similar to the Till in the Buttons Cleo dress, but with this one, it actually is an A-line style, so it suits my pear body shape so much better, and I don't actually have to make any alterations to this one, whereas I do with the Cleo. Um, so this one then, I have used a lovely denim fabric, which I got from Finisty Fabrics, um, and it, it has a slight stretch in it as well. I've added this lovely handmade label on the front of the pocket there, which was actually given to me um, by my Swap Share Sew partner, because this dress was made for the Swap Share Sew Challenge. So like I say, I made this um, for that challenge, so I've done a whole video all about this dress, so I'll link a card up above for you. So I've just used sort of standard um, dungaree buttons and buckles, which you hammer those in, so they're not the snap-on ones that you can get. And I just decided to do that because this strap length is slightly wider than the snap-on ones that you can get. So it just fits this style of buckle a lot better. And um, then what I actually had to do then was to sew the straps into place so they don't move around because obviously these ones um, they're not like changeable ones, although I think you can get that style. With this dress as well, it does actually have a crossover um, strap section there, as you can see. And next time I would change that just to be the same as the Clio dress where it just goes straight off. Because these straps do sit quite close to my neck because of that, the way it is crossed over at the back. Um, and I just find that I fiddle with it a little bit. So I think next time it's just the way they're cut. So I just changed that to so they go straight off rather than cross over. Um, I've also added some really pretty um, lining on there for the facings. And that fabric again was gifted to me from um, my Swap Share Sew partner. So you can see on the back, it is a slightly different one because they were fat quarters and I couldn't fit um, both the facings on one fat quarter. I've added my little labels. There's So Little Time by Karen. Um, and then I have also, lined this pinnacle dress so it's interlined should I say and I've just used a slippy lining fabric so that when I wear it with tights it doesn't stick to my legs and then I've finished the hem with a lovely mustard bias binding and I've also used that bias binding around the edge of the facing as well um, and I've added back pockets on as you can see here and I've top stitched the centre seam with some lovely gold top stitching thread um, and I really like how that looks it's just sort of the classic denim look isn't it really so this is a really really nice dress to wear with um cocoa tops underneath agnes tops underneath um yeah and you can wear it in the summer or the winter you can lay you know pop tights on with it and then sometimes if i want to layer it up if i'm a little bit chilly i'll wear it with a blackwood cardigan so yeah that's one of my, sort of my staple outfits it's just a really nice dress to sew as well and really really straightforward so if you are new to sewing sort of this style of dress, I think you'd be fine because the instructions that Julia provides from Bobbins and Buttons in her pattern, it's really, really straightforward um, and really clear. So that's that So one. I should go and get changed into my next mate. Right, so my next two dresses, I have actually done a separate video for, but I thought I'd just try them on anyway because I just really like these dresses. 
um, and it's just nice to talk to you in a little bit more detail about them. But if you do want to check the video out for these two dresses, then I'll link the card up above. Um, now these are for the Frugal Frock Challenge that took place during March. Um, and it was just such a lovely challenge to be part of and I really, really did enjoy it. And Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl and Sam from Frugalissima, they put in so much work into getting this um, challenge sort of going. And there were so many lovely sponsors and uh, prizes to be won. It was just, just such a lovely challenge to do during lockdown. Um, so the first dress then that I'm wearing is the Welcome to the Jungle shirt dress, which is actually designed by Julia from Bobbins and Buttons. So this is the picture of the shirt dress here, which really did take my fancy. Um, and then in the magazine I've got here, it's got the instructions of how to do it and some sort of photographic images to go alongside it. So it's in the um, issue 91 of Love Sewing magazine. So you can still get the pattern off the Love Sewing magazine website, but you need to actually have the magazine to be able to make this dress up. Um, so mine is actually a lot different to how it looks in the picture. I do go into a lot more sort of detail in my video, so I'm just going to quickly briefly skim over what I did. So I actually had the dress sleeveless instead of having sleeves, as I just really quite liked how that looked, especially with this busy fabric. Now this fabric is a lovely um, cotton lawn, which I got from Andrea Beyond the Pink Door. Again, it was a remnant piece, so she won't have this anymore. It has a lovely collar with collar stand um, and I, I think I did interface those pieces although with this fabric it has just given a more floppy effect but I don't actually mind how that looks. I've used poppers down the centre instead of buttons and buttonholes, I just cheated uh, to make it easier. I have added a waist belt um, which I will be wearing with this dress as I just think it looks better with the waist tie. Um, it does have pockets although they're very shallow so I do wish that those were a lot deeper, um, you know, like on my poppy pinafore. They need to be deeper. They're just too shallow. This is um, knee length on me, but I did take quite a lot off the length. And I have altered the dress quite a lot. Now, at the back of the dress, it is supposed to have um, a pleat underneath the yoke. So there is a yoke section on the back here which finishes there, and there is supposed to have this big pleat, which I took out completely because it just was too much fabric on the back for me, um, and it just didn't look right. It just looked like I got loads of excess. So um, I took that out, and I found a tutorial on how to do that um, online to take it out, which worked really, really well, which means that I don't have a centre seam down the back or anything like that. I took it actually off the side seams and had to redraft the armhole slightly. So that was really nice to be able to do that and I really do like this dress. I'm looking forward to wearing it once the weather warms up. Just feels like it's never going to get warm <laughs> at the minute. May has just been dreadful. We've had rain every day. Ugh. You know, sometimes I think I am living in the wrong country. <laughs> um, but yes, it's uh, just such a lovely dress. Now, the pockets, even though they're shallow, what I actually did was um, I top stitched them down so they don't flap about on the inside. And I just really like how that looks. Now you're not gonna be able to see that very well because it's so busy. Um, but if you were you know, using a plain fabric, then I think that top stitching would look really nice um, on there. Yeah, so I'm really pleased with the dress overall now that I've made those changes. Um, whether I'll go back and make another one, I don't know because I did have to make quite a lot of changes to it. I have made the changes actually to the pattern pieces um, now I made a size 10 um, and that was the right size for me, it's just that with that pleat at the back there was quite a lot of fabric and it had kind of a dipped hem um, which was longer at the back than it was at the front but yeah it just wasn't right for me so I just changed it significantly but I'm really happy with how it looks and I'll look forward to wearing this and again it will look nice with a denim jacket you know and even with a pair of trainers on I think it will look quite nice or sandals so I'm going to get changed into the other frugal frock that I made. So again, you might have seen this before, but I will just quickly try it on again for you. Right, so my second frugal frock then is this lovely Noor dress from fabricstore.com. And this is the front of the pattern here. So this is a free dress pattern from their website and you can download the um, instructions as well. It's really, really lovely. It's actually a full wrap dress. So you put it on like a coat and then tie it on the inside um, with a bow and then tie it on the outside with a bow as well. Uh, now this comes in quite a generous range of sizes. It comes 
as a size extra small through to a 4X, which is um, a size 0 to up to 28 sort of slash 30. Now, I don't know if that is in US um, sizes because I think this is a US pattern. It's, I, don't, I certainly don't think it's UK. Um, so it gives you all the, obviously, the body measurements and that kind of thing, but it also gives you the finished garment measurements as well, which I think is brilliant, especially for a free pattern. So I opted to make the size small, which is what it says my body measurements is for my bust, um, but my waist and sort of hip area fit in the size medium, but because it's got a full sort of gathered skirt, I knew I'd be okay with the um, the hip, but in hindsight, I think I should have gone up to the size medium for the, um, the bodice, because it doesn't give me as much wrap as this photo does on the front here. It, it is actually supposed to be quite sort of wrapped over. So what I'll do is I'll stand back a little bit so you can see in a little bit more detail. But um, this is the bodice on me. Now I have actually got a pin in it still to keep it from showing too much of my cleavage off, um, as I really don't like showing my cleavage off whatsoever. And um, it just doesn't wrap over as much. So I think I would prefer it sort of coming across here like that and I think if I did the size medium it would do that and to, to combine the medium top with the small skirt would be fine because you gather the skirt to fit the bottom of the bodice so you know there's no grading of any sizes which is great um, it is a really lovely pattern to make um, now you just finish the edge of the wrap with bias binding which you get the um, pattern piece within the pattern it is supposed to have three quarter length sleeves, but I decided to go with sleeve lifts for this option. So I just um, bias bound the armholes there. So that just gives a really nice finish. And then the skirt is a really big sort of 50s style gathered skirt. And it does wrap completely over. So you've got this double wrap all the way around and it's gathered on the underneath and on the top all the way around. So it does give this really 50s sort of style skirt, really quite poofy, which I really like actually. Now, if you didn't want all those gathers there and that bulk around your stomach, you could cut the um, one of the panels, uh, skirt panels, which is on the underside of the bodice, um, just straight so that you didn't have to gather it and that would sit flat and then you'd have just one sort of layer of gathering over the top so it wouldn't have as much poof. Um, now this dress comes down to sort of just below my knee and that is the length of the, the pattern itself. I haven't changed that whatsoever. So it is longer than what I usually go for, but I really do quite like that as I do think it is a very sort of 50s style dress. The fabric that I've used is from Felicity Fabrics and it's a cotton poplin fabric in this lovely cerise pink with these white polka dots all over it. And I absolutely love that. I think, certainly think it does give the 50s vibe. And then I've used for the tie on the um, outside, this lovely spotty bias binding, which was gifted to me by my lovely friend Rosie from Rosie Sewed Mods and Vintage. And I just think that contrasts really nicely. And then on the inside where you tie the top sort of bodice section um, on the inside here, that I've just used a very sort of fine um, silky tie um, to do that. So that, that works quite well for the inside because it doesn't add any bulk onto your waist or anything. It's a really beautiful dress. Considering it is free, it is a really, really nice pattern to sew. Um, and I will definitely be repeating this dress for sure in a different type of fabric. Um, and I, I still think I will keep the width of the skirt as it is and just keep it gathered all the way around because I do like that extra volume. I just think it looks really, really pretty. Um, and I think it is actually quite forgiving, you know, if you, if you had eaten a big meal or you're a bit bloated or whatever, then having that poofiness there, it doesn't really matter, you know. Um, but yeah, if you wanted a sleeker sort of look, then just don't gather the bottom, the underneath skirt, just cut that narrower so it's the width of the bottom of the bodice section on that wrap. So yes, that's this one. Really, really nice pattern. Absolutely love this. I'm so looking forward to wearing this one. So on to my next make. Right, next up then is the Ogden Cami by True Bias. And this is the pattern here. It's a really lovely cami top that is a real staple in my wardrobe. And it is really, really simple to make. I actually do have a sew along on my YouTube channel. So if you want to make this top and just need a bit of guidance, then please do check that video out. I'll link it up above for you. Um, I think they have since brought this pattern out with bust darts, but this version that I made doesn't have bust darts at all. It is just very basic. So the front and back are very similar, although the back just have a slightly deeper V. 
Um, now this comes in sizes 0 through to 18. Um, again, I'm not sure if that is UK or US sizes, um, but I have made a size 4 and that is for a bust of 34 inches, which again is perfect for me, um, but it's not the right size for my waist and hips. I fall into the size 6 for the waist and I actually fall into a size 12 for the hips. Um, but because this is, it has got quite an A-line shape to it, so it's a little bit more forgiving. And I think I initially sewed it up in a size six and it was too big, so I sized down to the size four and that works out perfectly for me. And I've, I've actually made this in quite a number of different types of fabric. Um, so you do get different looks with it. Now, what I've used this time around is a cotton poplin fabric, which I got from Crafty Sew and Sew. And um, yeah, it's just really nice to sew with. It's really quick and easy to make and with a cotton poplin, it's just really nice to sew because it doesn't shift about too much and it just behaves itself. So I shall just stand back so you can see it in a little bit more detail. So I've got it on with a bra, actually, a black bra, and I think it basically hides my bra straps. Um, so it is, I have got it as quite a close fit compared to how other people actually style it, but I prefer that on me. Um, and then you can see at the back, it does have a deeper V, and again, it's still covering my bra as well, so that's absolutely fine. Um, so you can see that it does have a slight A-line shape and it just finishes here. It's um, I have added length to this because otherwise it does come up quite short. So I've actually added two inches length onto the pattern. And again, I've done that at the short and length in lines just here. Um, and that just sort of is makes it sit where I want it to sit. So I'm really happy with that length. So I'm again, five foot five, so I've added two inches. And again, I don't think I'm particularly tall. So I think this pattern just comes up quite short as standard. So what I've actually paired it with is some Margot pajama bottoms from Tilly's Love at First Stitch, her first book. So this is the pajama bottoms here. And as you can see, it has a drawstring style waist, which I've not done because I don't feel that that is very comfortable. And I find if you go to the toilet, um, you know, you have to undo it and then do it back up again. It's just a bit of a nightmare. So I have actually made mine elasticated at the waist. So I'll stand back so you can see that. And I've just used the same fabric as the top so that it's just basically a matching set of pyjamas. Um, so you can see I've got the elasticated waist um, there. Now, um, I will say that I made a complete error when sewing these up. Um, that I sewed two front legs together, I think, or two back legs together. So I'd overlocked it as well and cut the fabric off. So these are a closer fit than they should be. Um, they're usually a little bit more baggy, but these are still really comfortable. And I've made a size four in these because they are a woven fabric um, and that just is the right sort of size for me. So you can see they are quite a nice length um, and I haven't taken any of the length off or added any length. So yeah, a lovely sort of elasticated waist there, um, so I can get them on and off, no problem whatsoever. And they're just a really straightforward sew. So they are in Tilly's first book, Love at First Stitch, for a reason, because that's where she really helps you start your dressmaking journey. And they are the first project in that book. Um, and I've made these a couple of times now, and they're just really, really comfortable and really easy to sew. Um, I'm still wearing my last pair. I have actually finished the bottom of the hem with some bias binding to keep the length, because I do like them at the length they are. Um, on my last pair I did add the keyhole opening to put a drawstring through but I still did the elasticated waist which is a really easy adaption to do. You just insert the um, elastic into that channel that you create basically. So really really dead simple and in actual fact she has brought out a pyjama pant sort of pattern now which has an elasticated waist which I don't have. It's the Jamie pyjamas I think it is. Um, so they, they have a shorts option as well. Um, but yeah, these are really just a really nice sort of duo, I find. The Margot pyjama bottoms and the Ogden cami top. It just makes a nice sort of lightweight pair of pyjamas to wear to bed. I really find them very comfortable and they're nice and cool to wear as well. The last pair I made was in a quilting cotton, so it was a little bit thicker. Um, and in actual fact, I don't actually have the top for that anymore because I used a whitish kind of fabric and my deodorant discoloured around the under the arms so this time I went with a darker fabric so it won't do that or at least I can't see that it's done that but yeah I really really like this combination so I wear this to bed quite regularly I now need to make another pair um yeah just to keep me going okay so the next few makes that I'm going to show you aren't for myself they are for my boys and I also made something for my neighbour's little girl as well so I shall just go and grab the next item that I want to share Okay, so next up then is a Bobbins and Buttons pattern and it is the George hoodie, which I have made for um, James. 
and it's this lovely teal sweatshirt fabric which I actually had from Minerva uh, for one of my blog posts in the past but I had some left over so I've used it for this pattern and it's got this lovely kangaroo style pocket on the front and then in the hood I have lined that with the um, leftover of my uh, Ponte Roma from Sew Me Sunshine which I use for my cocoa top and then for the cuffs and the bottom hem band I've just used some ribbon fabric that I already had now I don't know if this is coming across as a little bit grubby because he has been wearing it um, and I've not washed it as yet but yeah it was a really nice pattern to sew and um, it's just a really nice jumper on him it really does suit him now when I took the photos for um, the pattern test it was a pattern test that I originally did for um, Julia I actually had Thomas wearing it because James didn't want to model in it <laughs> and so I've got a picture of Thomas wearing it so I'll insert that photo now And I just think he looks really cute in it as well. Now I didn't make one for him because when I counted up their jumpers of what they each had, James didn't have as many and he didn't have one with a hood. Um, so I thought I'd do that for him. And it's definitely a pattern that I will be repeating. It's a really, really nice pattern. Now I'm not sure what the age range is. So I'll put that across the bottom of the screen. I don't physically have the pattern to show you because I pattern tested um, and I, I haven't actually got like the printed sort of booklet style printed off I just used it off my phone um, but yeah it was just such a nice sew and I'm really pleased with how it turned out it's really lovely fabric this sweatshirting from Minerva when you wash it it doesn't bubble or anything and it just always looks really nice and new still I actually made a South Bank sweater out of this fabric and it's just really really snuggly you know nice and squishy so that is the George hoodie by Bobbins and Buttons. Right, so next up is the Pixie Pea Coat by Twig and Tail. Um, and it's just a really, really cute little coat that you can make for your children. And Twig and Tail are a really nice company. What they do is they try and have you use sustainable fabrics, basically, to make these. So you can use old woolen blankets, um, you know, anything that you can reuse, basically. But I did make these coats for, um, both James and Thomas, my twins, um, in some soft shell fabric that I got from Felicity Fabrics. And it was just so lovely to work with. And I'm really pleased that I chose that fabric um, because I wanted it to have sort of the wear that they could use it in a, a, a rain shower, basically. It's not waterproof, but it, it doesn't soak into the fabric straight away like a normal sort of fabric would. Um, now I was gifted the fabric in return for a blog post. So there is a lovely blog post that I've done for Felicity Fabrics with photos of the boys wearing them and they just look absolutely adorable in them so I will link that down below if you want to have a little read of that and have a look at the photos um, but this pattern is so lovely to sew up and it is really really detailed you know they they give you so many instructions and so many photos now I've printed it off in black and white because I only have a a black and white printer um, but there are sort of photos in there to give you inspiration as well of what fabrics you can use and how they have designed it you can um, have it so you could have tabs and buttons down the front and um, you can have a pixie kind of hood um, yeah and just sort of make it into a very fairy tale style kind of jacket so I'll get the coats which I've done for the boys and then you can see how I've done them so basically they are exactly the same I had enough fabric um, to make two I wasn't planning on making two again I was only going to make one because um, I think it was James was his coat was getting a little bit too small and the others you know James uh, Harry and Thomas had each got a raincoat as such so yes this is my version in this lovely soft shell fabric from Felicity Fabrics which has got racing cars all over it um, I was going to do it unlined initially because on the reverse it does have a very nice kind of green fleecy fabric which is a very vibrant green so it was a very nice contrast very similar to the sort of green um, cars but in the end I lined it because I do quite like a neat finish on the inside um, and I'm really pleased that I did that because it does add that sort of extra layer of warmth as well so for the lining I just used some fabric that I already had which was a spotty cotton poplin um, and my husband did say, you know, is that not a little bit feminine? But I said, well, I'm going to use it and go with it. And perhaps it is, but I think with the cars on the front, it looks absolutely fine. And then I already had some snaps in my stash and the boys chose 
these two green coloured ones. So I've done them alternating colours as they go down and I really, really like how that looks. And you do top stitch down the front of the sort of button placket area and that looks really, really nice. Um, and the sleeves, they, the size of the coat rather does come as a more generous size. So they design it so that you get at least two years wear out of it. So you can roll the sleeves back um, and then, it, you know, the body would just get shorter as the child gets older, I suppose. But um, it's a really nice length on the boys. And I made an age four, I think it was. Now, they're five now, but I didn't want the coat to be too big for them because James especially is quite slight in his build. Um, so it would have swamped him otherwise. So I really, really like it. So, yes, I've added the snaps. So I'm just going to undo them. So on the inside then, you can see that it's fully lined and it just really, really is a nice finish on the inside. Really clean. Um, I've just ironed their name labelling for school. Um, so what I did forget to do, unfortunately, was to add a little hook so they could hang it up. But luckily, because it's got a hood, um, they can just hang it up on their pegs at school by their hood. And I've just done the round hooded version, which has a panel down the centre and then two side bits as well. So that was really easy to construct and I absolutely love how these have turned out. And initially they didn't wear them for a while so I was worried that I put all the effort into making them and then they weren't going to wear them but now they've been wearing them so much and I didn't let them wear them today to school because I wanted to show on the video and James had a bit of a meltdown, bless him, because he said, I want my racing car. Um, coat you know and I said I'm just borrowing it just for today just for today you can have it back tomorrow yes yeah, so we had a bit, bit of a meltdown but he was fine <laughs> um, but I'm so so pleased with these and this soft shell was so lovely to work with I mean obviously you can't use pins on it because you will pierce the fabric and then there's no going back so I did use my little clips they're called wonder clips um and I used those to you know hold the fabrics together ready for when I started sewing it um, so that worked really well and uh, they're where you've got the seam allowances on the inside where you can't really iron soft shell to make it the seam allowances stay open because it is quite a bouncy fabric. So I ended up top stitching, um, for instance, down the side seam, I have top stitched so that on the inside, those bulky bits of fabric lay a lot flatter. So even when I put the lining in, it just feels a lot flatter. So I'm really, really happy with that. Um, and that was another reason that I didn't really want to leave it unlined because it is quite a bulky fabric. So if I'd have added bias binding to those seams to give it a neater finish on the inside, I think it would just be too much bulk. Um, yeah, so I'm really pleased with how that has turned out. So for this one then, that's James's. Um, he has got mud all over it as well. So I will um, just show you Thomas's. So Thomas's is basically exactly the same, but um, the eagle eyed of you might notice that the um, button placket, I have had to turn the fabric around so the cars are going sort of driving upwards um, because I didn't quite have enough fabric to cut the button band in the same way that I'd done the rest of the coat basically because I wasn't initially going to be doing two coats but I just managed to squeeze two out and I'm really glad that I did because the photos I've taken are just so, so lovely. They look great in them as well. And Thomas likes his sleeves turned up. Um, so yeah, you can see that you can turn the sleeves up and that, that's really quite nice, you know. So I mean, if I'd have not had this spotty fabric in my stash, I perhaps would have gone out and bought some stripy fabric or something a little bit more sort of gender um, specific, I suppose, I don't know. But um, I'm quite happy with the spots and nobody has commented to say, oh, he's got a girl's coat on or anything like that. The one thing I will say with this style of coat, it is quite A-line, so that, that is quite a feminine kind of look on it but you could easily taper that in or straighten it out basically if you wanted to, but they look absolutely fine in it, you know, so um, I will insert some photos of them wearing it just so you can see what they look like. So I'll do that now. Okay, so next up is a garment for Harry. So he's not been left out. I've actually made a jacket for him and it was a pattern test for bobbins and buttons and it went on sale yesterday. You can get it off the Project Run and Play website as Julia designed it um, as part of a collaboration she was doing with Project Run and Play. Um, and it's a really, really lovely jacket. So there was an option to have a lined version and an unlined version. And because it was under quite a tight time scale to get this pattern test done, I opted to do the unlined version. And that was mainly because 
A, I didn't have any fabric for the outer, I didn't have any fabric for the inner, um, so I had, had to source some fabric to make the coat up, and um, I just was worried about the time scale and receiving the fabric and getting it done on time, so I opted to do the unlined version, but in hindsight, I think it took me a little bit longer because I bias bound all of the seams, but I absolutely love how it's turned out. So Harry has actually already got a raincoat, so he didn't really need one, and I didn't want to pay out for waterproof fabric when I didn't need one for him. So I opted to just use some lovely cotton twill fabric that I got from Crafty So-and-So. Now it is a stretch cotton twill, um, but I didn't obviously need the stretch in it anyway, but it was just that I really liked this colourway, and it really does suit Harry. So as you can see, I have used bias binding, bind, I have used bias binding around the outside of the hood, on the inside where you've got the panel in the middle, all the way down the front and then as well on the inside of the coat, so on, basically on every single seam. Um, so that's why it did take me quite a long time to do this coat. Um, and it was lovely actually inserting the zip because it was just where you top stitched it in place. It was really quite a simple one to do. It has these lovely big gusset pockets um, as you can see here, and the instructions were really clear on how to do that, so I had no problems doing them. It was the first time I'd ever done a, dus a gusset pocket. It wasn't supposed to have a popper on, but Harry wanted to have one on there, so I'll just show you that undone. So as you can see, it's really big pockets, so he can put, you know, all his tools in and stuff, because this is his work jacket. Now, if you watch my one of my episodes of my Friday Sews, you will have heard me talking about Harry and how he loves to do anything that his dad does, and he is obsessed with any sort of power tool that he brings home, and he's got toy versions of it as well. So, um, for that reason, I have sewn on this lovely embroidered patch, which says Still, and it's got this chainsaw picture on, and uh, that is one of the brands for the chainsaws, you know, and the strimmers, and hedge cutters and all that kind of thing. Um, but I couldn't source one of these from the UK. Um, still do have a website in the UK, but I couldn't get that. But there was one on the Canadian website. And my lovely friend, Cindy, who lives in Canada, we have met through social media, um, the lovely sewing community. So I contacted her and she kindly ordered it for me and then sent it all the way from Canada to here. And it arrived um, early this week and I've sewn it on for him and he is absolutely over the moon with it. He just absolutely loves it and he wore it to school yesterday to show his teacher and his friends, you know, to show it off. And he now wears it in the garden when he's doing his work <laughs> and stuff. So I've actually taken some video footage of him wearing it and some photos. So I'll insert those now for you. So what do you think to your new coat, Harry? Good. And to your new logo? Look at that. Tight. What about your pockets? They're really big. So they you can put work tools in. Excellent. What are you what are you gonna do now? Uh my drawers. Are you? Yeah, look down there, there's a mower. <laughs> So yeah, he absolutely loves it. Um, and I have to say, it's a really nice pattern. It goes from 12 months up to the age of 14. So you have a massive age range there. And it's a really nice fitting coat as well. I made the age seven for Harry and he is seven and a half now and it fits him just absolutely perfectly. And my friend also pattern tested and she made one for her son who's the same age as my twins, who's five. And she also said that the fit was brilliant, you know, for the age. Yeah, and I just really like how that has turned out. So I've also put the bias binding around the bottom of the sleeves as well. So if you were to make it in a waterproof fabric, I know that you can do the unlined version if you're using like a see-through kind of waterproof fabric, you know, one of those ones that you can see through. Um, or if you wanted to do the lined version, you could definitely use a different type of waterproof fabric or any other fabric and do the lined version and it would still look amazing. Um, yeah, and I initially was going to just put straightforward pockets on but Harry really wanted the gusset pockets for his tools and stuff so yeah he's over the moon with that so as am I because you know when you make things um for your children sometimes you do worry that are they actually going to wear it but I've been really lucky with these ones that they really do enjoy wearing them
So I'm really, really happy about that because I have made some things in the past and they've not worn them. <laughs> so they've just ended up going to the charity shop. So the last thing I wanted to share with you was actually another pattern test that I did for Julia at Bobbins and Buttons, which was back end of last year, actually. The pattern has now been released, but I don't actually physically have it here to show you because I made it for my neighbour's little girl, so she's now got the dress. And it was a cute little dress called the Alice dress, so I will insert a stock photo of what that looks like. It's really, really beautiful. I really, really did enjoy sewing this dress. It was just such a nice sew. And I really did like how the fit turned out for my neighbour's little girl. And I just made it in her size. So I think she was 10 at the time. So I made a size age 10. And that fitted her absolutely perfectly. And it was, um, what I did use was some fabric that I've got off a fabric swap table at the Sew Brum event that I went to a couple of years ago. Um, so it was really nice to finally use some of that. And I had enough left over to make a garment for myself as well, which I have since used, but I don't, can't show you that yet because that was again, another pattern test, which hasn't been released as yet. So I did take some video footage and photos of the dress that I made for my neighbor's little girl. So I'll insert those now for you. Okay, so here is the Alice dress then by Bobbins and Buttons. You can see it's got this lovely frill detail down the front, just sort of to here. And then it comes down and it's got this lovely pocket detail just here. So that's kind of within the seam. And I really like the construction of that, but that was really simple to do. And so that's obviously on both sides and then the frill on the other side as well, which goes over the shoulder. I've used the three quarter length sleeve option. And on that, I've just um, overlocked the edge and then just turned it up. You are supposed to do a double turn, but I wanted to keep the length as much as possible. And then on the bottom, I have done a double turn hem, and that's 1.5 centimetres folded, and then another 1.5 centimetres folded up, and I've just top stitched that along the bottom. So, as you can see, it has a zip. I'll just turn it around. So you can see it's got an invisible zip um, and I actually bought a 22 inch invisible zip um, but it was actually too long so I ended up cutting that slightly shorter and um, just because I couldn't get the 20 inch that was required for the pattern. So you can see that the ruffle goes all the way down the back as well and that looks really pretty. I'm really pleased with that. This fabric is actually just a cotton and um, it's quite a soft cotton so it feels a bit softer than a quilting cotton although it is the same kind of thickness. And I'm really, really pleased with the, the dress overall. My neighbour, she is age 10, so I have made the size age 10 and that fits her perfectly. So I will insert a little video as well. Yeah, and it was just such a lovely sew, a really, really pretty dress. I really like the frills around sort of the armholes and it was in the seam line and the way the seam line comes down, um, you've got these pockets and it's really, really pretty. And I said to Julie, you know, you ought to bring an adult version out of that because I definitely would wear it. And I think that may be in the pipeline now because a few people have actually commented to say that they wouldn't mind making them, you know, for themselves and they've made it for their children. So watch this space, you never know, that might be uh, going ahead in the future. Yeah, that was such an enjoyable sew and I really did enjoy doing the frill around there and I think that project also is really suitable for double gauze fabric so that gathers really well um, but the cotton poplin I think it was that I used that was really nice to sew with and I just love that colour of fabric it's a really nice pop of pinky kind of red so I think that brings me up to date with everything that I have <laughs> sewn since I last did a makes video um, so I really do hope that you've managed to stay with me throughout this entire video and that you've liked what I've sewn. Let me know what your favourite was, I'd be interested to know. Um, yeah, and I, I'm really glad that I finally got this video uploaded. I'm really sorry that it's been so long and that it is such a long video. Um, you know, it's just one of those things, but hopefully I won't leave it as long next time and I'll have shorter <laughs> makes video to share with you. So thank you very much. Please don't forget to give this video a like and please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. That would be amazing. And I shall see you again very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.